So we're just going to talk about replacing a string. Um, this is uh, uh, there, there's a lot to it, and actually, even though Jake and McKinley, even though you guys have both done a lot of restringing, there are a few things that I want to go over with you guys when replacing just one string that I haven't talked to you about before. So so you're going to learn some new stuff today as well. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we need to know what string what string we're going to use. And so this is just my little kit that I use in the field. So of course, we're just going to measure it with calipers, right? And this string here happens to be 30, 33 thousandths. So what is that? Like a 15 ish, something like that, maybe. The 14. Here's a 15 and a half, and it's measuring. So let's go, f let's try maybe 14 and a half. That one's measuring at 34, 35. Here's a 14. Yeah, I'm just measuring at 32. So let's go 14 and a half. I have it. And truth be told, I have in a pinch, like I've been at a customer's house. There's a 14 and a half. And I have used a size, you know, slightly too big or slightly too large. It's not ideal, but it works okay. I don't know that I could hear a difference. Yeah, this one's measuring at 33. Okay, so that's the one we want. So we're done, should be done with that now. Okay, um, why don't we get, let's get um, maybe a couple people over here, a couple people over here. So, and then maybe some people can, can watch what I'm doing kind of over Where's Mike? Mike should be here. Uh, I didn't check the break room. He might be down there. Yeah, would you? Yeah. I want him to be here for this. All right. So there are a lot of steps. So especially when doing when doing just one single note, the 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 things that I'm going to show that show show you and that you guys are going to learn um, that you haven't done before is when you're at a, is when you're at a customer's house and you're replacing a string like this, um, we want it to stretch as quickly as possible. We want it to, to like, to get in its final groove as quickly as we can so we're not constantly getting calls. I mean, yes, we do put in a, um, a, a felt little piece to mute it out, but even so, um, like on this string, for example, that F, so that F right now, we're only hearing one of the three strings. If we were to replace the other two strings, right, because it attaches here, goes around, and then attaches, um, and it's the same note. So it's two strings on that F, and then the other third string, right, is shared with the F sharp. So, the, so this string here, the right string on the F, is the same physical string as this one on the F sharp. Everybody catch that? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I were to put a piece of felt in there and, um, uh, and then leave, that string is gonna go badly, badly flat very quickly and it's gonna drive the customer crazy. And even if you have a piece of felt in there, um, it's, it's, just, it's gonna bleed through and it's gonna drive the customer crazy. So um, where, where most of you are you know, doing, doing work just here in the shop and not going to customers with the exception of, of McKinley, when we replace, the reason that I want to teach you this is because we are, we do do the occasional replacement of a, of a string um, here in the shop where it's just one string. And so I do want to go through this process um, when we replace that one string here in the shop. So, so it's more, it's just more involved than, than just when we're doing the regular restringing. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, looks like we still have um, a, uh, a little bit of the old string right here that's wrapped around that middle tuning pin. So I'm going to back it out, maybe about a full turn. That's about where I left it there. I'm going to back this one out again, about a full turn. Okay, so the pins are now a little bit higher. This one could come up even more because we're going to be tightening this these down. And so we just want to start higher since we're going to be going. And actually it's easier. So there's the there's the old thank you. You can you can always pound the um, pin down, but you once it's once it's in um, up to pitch, you can't pull it up down is the only way you can go. So if you go a little bit too high coming up, that's no problem. Okay. Okay, first thing is, I guess I'm going to chop this off. It has that little bend in there that is put so it doesn't get kind of sucked into the, the rest of the row. Oh, I clipped it away. So I'm going to start going this direction towards the tuning pin. And then this, this is a, I think it's quarter inch brass stock and we have it brass so that it doesn't damage the steel string because brass is a lot softer, right? And it just has a little hole in that. So. Uh, so that's a, a type of coiler? Yeah, exactly. Just a little hand coiler. So I'm gonna push, I'm gonna push that, that wire through only, only to the very edge. I don't want it to poke through at all. And I'm going to start, and you're going uh, facing this way, you're going to go clockwise, right? And I'm going to start by, by really putting a strong bend in there around that becket. And then here again, I'm going to make sure that we're covering half the hole, right? Because one, one revolution, it's going to go to the other side of the hole if it's tight. So that means a half revolution, it'll cover half the hole. If you go 180 degrees, covering half the hole, 360 degrees, it's it's gonna uh, touch touch the the hole the becket is what it's called so there's one revolution and I'm kind of keeping it tight and sort of using my thumb to keep it tight there's two revolutions and then I'm gonna go let's see let's go about three quarters okay so about two and three quarters revolutions I'm use my pliers to pull that out use a dummy pen and use the foil maker. Yeah, that's that's fine too. Okay, and I'm going to put it on put it on the middle pin. I guess you could do either, but it's just easier to start on the 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 middle pin is always harder to maneuver around because it's cr more crowded in there. So I'm going to start with that one. Okay, my becket, my becket looks like it's at about seven o'clock. So now I'm going to I'm going to back out the middle pin a little bit further so that my hole, the Beckett hole, is also at seven o'clock. There we go. And try and pull that. Um, everybody see that how, how that looks? Everybody see that? Okay. grab it at the end of the becket and pull it away just so that it doesn't scrape the pin as I pull it down. So that uh, string is really sharp. Okay, there and I got it in the hole. Push that. Push that becket all the way in the hole. It's going to pop out, but just want to make sure that we're good. You know that we're as far in as we can. Okay. Then, since we're middle pin here, I'm going to put it around around the bridge, around the hitch pin, give it a bend, and pull it over to the other the other pin. All right. This is the this is the measuring that I use. I use four fingers. So I'm going to put my pinky, my measuring. It's like the middle of my pinky right there at my target pin, which is now the furthest, the closest pin. And then 
measure it that way. See, we're going up and over the thing for now. So there's my target pin. I'm going to cut it right there, and that's my measurement. Okay. Tighten that up later. Okay, now just for simplicity, we can take it off the bridge again. So, so far, McKinley and Jake are super familiar with this process, but it'll, it'll start to get different here in a little bit. Or I'll add on to your knowledge in a little bit. put it back in the little coil maker make sure the um, the end of the string is flush with the other side and I'm keeping it nice and tight and then again try to go cover half the hole when you're half a revolution and you want to keep it nice and tight as much as possible as you go around Apparently I didn't measure that very well. That's all right. Okay, now this time, yeah, my string is again at about seven o'clock. So I'll back this out again so that the hole on the tuning pin is at about seven o'clock. Again, pull that Beckett away so it doesn't scratch the side of the pin. It doesn't really matter. It's just kind of cosmetic, and we don't want to mark up the plate or the tuning pin if we don't have to. Okay. So they're both at 7 o'clock right now, but one is very, is very loose. I didn't measure that very well at all. Um, but it'll be okay. It'll be... Is your pin shorter? Or longer? A little bit shorter. Yeah, so that it's not, doesn't have that big um, mm -hmm. uh, loose area there. It'll be okay. We'll just have maybe a little bit more coil than necessary. Okay, we want these Beckets, and it doesn't really matter. It's just like a sign of, of somebody that does really nice work, does really nice restringing work, is you want those Beckets to line up, whether it's at 12 o'clock or three o'clock or six o'clock, whatever, you want them to, to line up to be at approximately the same. So I'll start with actually, it's, it's, um, it's actually counterintuitive. I'm gonna start with the tight one. You'd think that you'd start with the loose one because you're taking up more slack. They actually start with the tighter one and what it's end up gonna end up doing is it's actually end up pulling the, this side around a little bit as I get as I get that tighter, you can use a hook um, if you want to pull this up. I'm just going to use a screwdriver. Hopefully that can get, get it tight. The, you want that coil nice and tight because that's the. this is what we're going to get into. Everywhere that there's the possibility for any kind of energy to be lost, um, anywhere the string isn't going the actual absolute shortest distance, that's the possibility for that note to go out of tune very easily so part of that is making sure that coil is nice and tight okay so here we go um, now i'm at uh, 11 I think my coil is tight okay now what you're going to see is this is going to start to tighten up it already has and you're going to see this kind of be pulled around to the other side of the hitch pin there you see that mm -hmm. okay. okay so i've got it under some tension now you can see the beckett is kind of poking out of the tuning pin there. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's if you if you get it under too much tension, you won't be able to push it in like that. Um, it'll just bend. Um, it won't go back into the becket. It'll just bend the string. But if it's under kind of moderate tension, you have to find that sweet spot where it's under enough tension that when you push that becket into the hole, 
it'll stay, but not so much tension that if you try to try to push it in, it doesn't go in and it bends the string. Okay, there's a there's kind of a sweet spot there. Okay. Okay, now now I'm too high on the coil, which is actually what I want, because there again I can pound it down. And I, I'm, I'm going to eventually pound it down so that on the opposite side of where the becket goes in, on the other side, it's going to the string is going to come around and cover half the hole, because remember, that that tells you that your string is perfectly perpendicular to the tuning pin, because if it's covering the entire hole, then that means your your angle with the tuning pin is too far coming down. If it's covering none of the hole, that means it's slightly coming up, but if it's covering half the hole half a revolution, half the hole. So it's, it's going in, in on this side, half a revolution, half the hole. Then by the time it gets around on this side, now it's, it's butted up against, it's tied up against the, the other string. Okay, and, and so, so that's how we know that, that, our, that we're perpendicular, coil is nice and tight. Okay, so, um, so now I'm at, uh, looks like about two o'clock on this one and it's still seven o'clock on that one. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more because I'm I'm just guessing. There is a little bit of guesswork sometimes. So maybe I'll go to three o'clock. All right, so there I'm at three o'clock. Looks like my becket is nice and tight. Where the right now the coil is not tight and it's above the hole. We'll tighten that up later. Now I'm going to go to this one, give it a little tension, and see if see if the becket will now stay in. Yeah, yeah, it stayed in kind of, but we'll push it in again here in a bit. Okay, go to 12 o'clock, one o'clock. Push that in again. Okay, now it's staying a little better. Let me make sure that my Before we get it under too much tension, we got to make sure that we're that the string spacing is correct. So there's kind of a lot of things that you have to pay attention to all at once. Stringing hook is probably easier, but I don't know. I just didn't have one handy, so screwdriver will work just fine. Okay, there again, I'm too high on this one, which again is correct. So we're going to push it down later. Now I'm at 3 o'clock and 2 o'clock, which is, so I think my guess was about right. Okay, see that tighten up there? Now I'm at 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And let's listen to the pitches. Okay, so they're the same pitch, but they're way far off from that, which is our target pitch. So now I'm just going to kind of go back and forth between the two so that they're 3 o'clock, 3.30, 3 3.30, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 4.30, 4.30, right? So that we keep those Beckets at the same position because, again, it doesn't matter, but it's just one of those things that was like pounded in me when I was a new technician that good technicians have Beckets that are equal, right? And so that's what I do, and I'm a good technician. I'm a good technician. That's right. So I'm going to go to 4.30 or, or 4 o'clock. Okay, check, check our pitch. Okay, we have some semblance of pitch, but we're still pretty far. And this one is the lower pitch. Okay. So every time I tighten it, I've got my, I've got my uh, screwdriver kind of prying it up a little bit. Um, you don't want to touch the plate. And if, if you haven't been watching, I haven't touched the plate. Um, that's another that's another sign of a good technician is that you, is that you can replace a string and you don't have marks all over the plate, or or on some on some pianos it'll be the pin block that'll be exposed, and the the pin block is even softer sometimes than the plate and you just have like wood wood damage all over, where and I see that often on pianos that strings have been replaced by a technician that maybe doesn't have as much experience. Okay, let's listen to the pitches. Okay, we're getting close. And we're at about four o'clock on both. Which one is lower? Okay, so the middle one. Okay, so we're a little high, that's good. And I ended up at about four o'clock, 4.30. Okay, 
Okay, so we're high on both. I'm gonna go a little higher, just nudge them both high. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, so we're, we're what, about 50 cents sharp or something, maybe 20 cents sharp. There's a lot of things that we're gonna do now. Okay, so now this is where things start to get new for these guys. Okay, first, first thing I'm gonna do is, yeah, I'm gonna do the, um, I'm gonna get those coils nail them down um, you know you ideally probably want to use brass for this I don't I don't know that it's super necessary I screwdriver works well okay you hear that mm -hmm. just from tapping it down that's that's like that's what I was talking about that you have like s stored energy in there so as I'm tapping it down so that 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 string is perpendicular or the coil is perpendicular to the tuning pin it's just like releasing all that energy really fast and that's the click that you heard so i'm still let's see i'm still covering the entire hole oh why don't we check that just for fun okay that was that's pretty dramatic it was sharp 20 cents or so now it's flat just from doing this one Okay, so now I'm kind of covering only a quarter of the hole. It's getting there. That's probably good. So, so now this one is covering half the hole. Let's listen to it. Compared, here's our reference, and here's the the one that we just. Uh, way way flat okay now so i'm gonna do the other one if we hit it too low like do we have to go through you have to loosen it pull it up okay. and then retighten it and that can mess and with your back down. yeah okay. now i'll go the other one so there was that which is why i keep checking it rather than I don't want to go too low. Yeah. It'll we'll get there, Jake, I promise. Okay, now those are two those are covering half the hole. All right. So we're good now. Now I'm going to um I'm going to push the beckets in with vice grips. Um simply because you have the compound action, you have a lot more squeezing power with the with the needle nose vice grips rather than using even even a big needle nose like this you don't have as much squeezing power this one you can really force it in there good and and again that's part of making sure that everything is tight there's no excess energy the becket is is in touching that touching the tuning pin not coming out slightly like this so i'll put it on my becket there and then get it to the point where it's just really tight okay same with this one all right one final thing before we get to the the final kind of setting it in place is I want to make sure that the height Remember how I backed it off at the beginning? So if you, if you are in a position where you can look, these are the two pins. You can see they're slightly higher than the rest. Okay, and, and here again, it doesn't really matter so much, frankly, but I don't know. We're good technicians, we do good work. We wanna make sure that cosmetically these tuning pins are like the others. I'm going to leave it again slightly high because the pitch is now super low. Listen to the pitch. Here's our target and here's our pitches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so I'm, going to, I'm going to pull it up. I, I'm going to uh, turn it clockwise, which is, going to, which is going to pull it deeper into the pin block. So I'm going to leave it ever so slightly high. That's about where we are. Okay, now... So we're F. 
Okay, I'm going to go to uh, 15 cents sharp. Okay. So they're both about 15 cents sharp. Um, now I'm going to start messing with this string to kind of pre-stress it so that it just quickly blends in with its neighbors. And so we're not constantly going back and tuning it and messing with it, um, trying to um, constantly keep up with it as it stretches. So we can't really physically stretch the steel, but we can do everything else. We can kind of uh, pre-bend everywhere it bends, um, make sure that it's in its final resting place. There's nowhere else it can go. Um, okay, first thing I'm gonna do, actually, again, I like to use a hook for this, but I'll just use my spring tool. It's gonna work just fine. Um, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna give it a yank up to kind of, uh, pre-stress that bend where it goes around the capo bar there, right? So I'm pulling pretty hard, right? To give it that stress, give it that bend. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's see what that did to the pitch. Okay, so just that bend, right? We tuned it to 15 cents sharp and already we're, we're like 50, yeah, right here. Not all. Some have A graphs. So just, just that one bend, we're already down to like, I don't know, 30 or 40, 50 cents flat of where we were just with that one bend. Okay, so. Okay, so this is the part that I want you guys to pay attention to. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, to 15 cents sharp. This tool, where is it? Here it is. This is a coil tightener. Oh yeah, that's Okay. Um, okay, good. There will be more. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, there's there's kind of a there's kind of a loose side and a tight side. I generally like to use the tight side. So I'm gonna go 100 revolutions in the direction of the coil. So the idea is we're kind of knocking that coil, knock, 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 as we're sort of going around and around with the tuning, with the coil tightener, that it's sort of releasing more energy into the string. Um, and we'll see how much it changes. My, my experience is that about 100 revolutions with this coil tightener, um, and you're pretty much there. You've pretty much, you're, you're not gonna get it any tighter than that. Ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, and okay, we're about at a hundred. Let's see what that did to our pitch. So we were at fifteen cents. Okay, now again we're super flat. Okay, just, just kind of, so what, what we're doing, if you, if you can think of the coil, right, it, or, or the pin, we have the coil that's sort of loosely, like it's touching maybe at a few different points around the tuning pin, but as you're doing that coil tightener, it's like beating it into submission. So it's like forcing that coil tighter and tighter and tighter around that tuning pin. So there's nowhere for that, um, nowhere for that string to go. It's as tight around the tuning pin as you can possibly get it. Okay. So... I was going counterclockwise, which is kind of releasing energy into the, the into the string. Okay. 
So there again, we're way flat on that one we just did. And here's the one that we haven't done yet. We're still at 15 cents sharp. So there we are, um, see how flat we are? So um, this, uh, let's see, this green line is the next pitch down. So we're actually pretty close to being an E there. So we, both of them are, you know, approximately, um, I don't know, 70 or 80 cents flat from, from doing that. Okay, so we're gonna go up to 15 cents sharp one final time. Actually, no, we're gonna, we're actually gonna leave it. But this is the last, like, um, pre-stressing that we're gonna do. Okay, 15 cents sharp. Is pre-stressing pretty much the same as, uh, like, pitch rates? No, totally different. No, this is dealing with the string physically. Okay. And pitch raise is, that's a totally different thing. Because um, these strings, they have, they have bends in them, right? So here, here are strings that, that have been used for a hundred years. Obviously we have, we have a bend there. Then down here, we've got those bends those bends there where they kind of go up into the A graph, up over this section, and so that's what that's what those bends are. So that's what we're doing here is we're we're trying to um, kind of beat those bends. Yeah, we're trying to imitate years of years of use. Um, so if you can imagine if the string is going up and over a where it changes direction, if it kind of goes slowly, which is what it does at first, because it's made of steel, right? It, it kind of starts slowly, and as it, as it ages, it goes less rounded over the change of direction and gets more precise straight in a straight line. And of course, that's the shortest distance between two points, right? Is a straight line, change direction, straight line. So we're trying to get it as close, as quickly as we can to the point where everywhere it changes directions, it's just in a straight line. Otherwise, there is energy in the system that is going to quickly um, start to change, and so you've got notes that are out of tune. All right, so I'm going to start at the back. Um, I'm going to use a. I'm going to use brass for this one. Make sure it's seated all the way. And give it a little tap so that it's so that it's straighter again around the um, can't really fit that in there terribly well. So I'm going to use a steel screwdriver on a steel string. Not ideal, but it's all right. Okay, now we have bends here. Seat it on the bridge. Seat it on the bridge here. Put the bends in on this side. Okay, we already pulled it up on that side. So now on this side, I'm gonna just kind of encourage, encourage those bends. So now let's see, out of curiosity, we were 15 cents sharp again. Let's see what all of that did. Okay, we're back to, well, that one's over 100 cents. So those bends do a lot. All of these, all of these little procedures, they, they really speed up the process of that string getting, and this doesn't do anything to the tone, by the way. I mean, 
Uh, I've a I actually have done this before on, on a restringing, um, and it sounds great. I mean, there's no, there's no issues with it. Uh, we don't do it on restringing because they all kind of go out of tune together, and, and it's, just, it's just too much of a, like doing this whole process is just way too, way too much. So when we're doing it on a, especially on a customer's piano where we really want that string to get, to become like the others. There's one other benefit, and that is, especially when pulling it up, when, when putting the bend in under there, if you were to, um, uh, if you weren't to do those bends of pulling it up, the one that I did with my spring tool, the strings would actually be slightly on a lower plane than the neighbor, than the old string. And so that hammer would strike the two lower strings before it even had a chance to get up to the old string. And so when you're pulling it up and making that bend, that brings those other strings up to the same plane as the other string. So when that hammer strikes, it hits all three of them. Okay, now the final thing that I'm gonna do, if I'm at a customer's house, so McKinley, pay close attention, is um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this way sharp, like even higher than 15 cents. Okay. So right now I have that, I have that offset at 15 cents and I'm even sharper than that. Okay. Same thing with this one. And here's our target pitch, right? Quite a bit lower. And there's the, there's, that's where I'm gonna leave it. And then I'm gonna cut a piece of felt or maybe two pieces of felt and I'm gonna stuff them in there. Um, maybe I'll do it just, just so that you can hear it. What it, well, maybe I can just use a mute. So for a little while, we're gonna have a piece of felt or two pieces of felt stuffed in there between those two strings so that the customer's only gonna hear that, right? And you gotta make sure that they are hearing it because even if you have a piece of felt in there and they're not hearing it, that means that you have to pull those strings up higher because it's not on the same plane and it's lower and it's preventing that, the, the hammer from hitting the, the old string. So after, after, you know, probably just a few weeks with all of this, usually it takes like six months or more for that string to, so if we restring a piano, it's gonna take six months for all of this to happen. But if it's a new string um, or, or a string in the showroom where, where we really wanna do this quickly, like the Kawai, we've got a Yamaha down there um, that needs a new string. We wanna speed this up. This is the procedure. I'm gonna leave it sharp and you'll even notice that, that the very next day that those strings that are like 30 cents sharp or 40 cents sharp are probably gonna be down to 20. And then you know, they'll probably end up more or less about pitch. And we pull that thing out, it'll be, it'll be good. And we tell when you put the thing in, what is that exactly doing? The mute, uh -huh. the felt, it's just muting out the, the new string. Oh, okay. So that in the meantime, people can play it and, and get that. I mean, that's kind of in tune versus this. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. What that makes sense. Makes sense. So once I hear it, then it's like, ah, got it. Okay. So, so when, you're, when you're totally done, this is, this is what you look for. This is like the, the, the hallmarks of, of good work. So we have the tuning pins are even height-wise with the neighbors. We have three coils on both. Both Beckett's are the same. They're both at five o'clock. Again, that doesn't so much matter if it's exactly five o'clock or three o'clock or one o'clock, whatever, as long as they're the same. Um, the, they're both on the opposite side of where the Beckett goes in. They're covering half the hole on both sides. Um, what else? Well, the string, as it goes over here, they're, they're evenly spaced, right? They're not closer. Like you can see some of these neighbors like this one, I mean, that's probably been that way for a hundred years. And even this neighbor is, they're too wide. So this is the one that we did. We've got them evenly spaced both here and where they go under the cable bar there. They're all, they're all lined up. Then, then we look, we've got, we know we've got this 
the string properly seated on the bridge. And then back here at the hitch pin, we, we see that, the, that the, the loop there at the end of the string is properly seated all the way on the plate. And we don't see any kind of bulge on either side, no bulge on either side of the, of the pin, but they just kind of go straight wrap around and then straight back okay so that's uh, that's a that's good work and that's gonna um, that's gonna quickly adjust stretch out and be very stable um, like I said in like a week or two okay. all right did you get that there was some new stuff right Jake yes yeah, okay a lot. all right good good okay <laughs> All right, there it is. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, You're welcome.